Hello YouTubes, this is Professor Vaganov. This is going to be a Hello World tutorial and I'm going to try to teach you a couple things that most Hello World tutorials aren't going to show you. I've got some example Hello World code up here. I'm going to remake it from scratch though so that you guys can see where all of it came from. Talk a little bit about what each of these little things here actually do. Start a new project in Visual Studio 2010. Show you a couple other ways to compile C++ code. So, let's make a new project, file, new, project, a general empty project. A lot of other tutorials recommend you do a Win32 console application and then choose empty project as part of the wizard. You can kind of skip a couple steps if you just do Visual C++ general empty project. And we're going to do an empty project so that you can see everything built from scratch. So I'm going to make a hello world example thing thing there we go and it'll start a new project here so there's obviously no place to write code we have to make a place to write code so I'm gonna uh, make a new file and I can make a new file in any one of these filters they're just places for us to organize our code I'm gonna right mouse click on the source file and add a new item and this is where we're going to add our main cpp file, our main.cpp. So this creates an empty file here. I'm going to make this larger so that you guys can see it better by hitting shift alt enter and then start the program. Pound include, well actually one thing, you need a main and this is legal code right here. I can actually compile this and it'll work. If I hit this green button to start debugging or I go to build build solution and then debug whoa, where is it? Start debugging then it'll run the program and you saw a black window pop up for just a second that's all that this program is doing. Int main, this right here this just creates an entry point for our computer program and it returns zero, it returns an integer, zero is an integer I can actually write this to be void main and if it's void main that means it doesn't return anything void means nothing it actually means undefined so this is valid C++ syntax as well if I try to compile this that also works and makes the black box. This isn't enough to make our hello world program. So I'm going to finish out the hello world program part of it. I'm going to bring this back to int main, put the return zero back there. Return zero, this is just a, a common standard. In Visual Studio C++, void main works, but it doesn't always work in every other compiler, so that's why you'll see int main much more frequently. To print hello world to the screen, there's a couple ways to do it. I'm going to do first the normal way that everybody shows you how to do it using iostream. iostream usually has this piece of code associated with it. I'll explain what that is in a second. C out hello world. and that makes our hello world. So I can run this by hitting the button here. I can also hit F5 or Control F5. Control F5 will actually run it in release mode. But anyway, it worked and I don't know if you guys saw that, but it said hello world. Actually, it didn't say hello world, but as soon as it wrote hello world, then it immediately quit because right now our, our program is doing exactly what we told it to do. When the entry point of the program is run, main, the first thing it does is it tries to print out Hello World, and at the moment that it's done printing Hello World, it ends the program, and that's it. But we want to see what is being printed, so we're going to halt the computer for a minute. I'll show you a couple ways to do it, but I think the best way is like this. So if I run this, there we go, it says hello world. Alright, so what does all this mean? Well, this right here 
is the library that tells us what C out is and it actually tells us what endl is and it actually also tells us how these things work. These are the output operators. Conio.h, that dot h means header, is the console input output header and it gives us the get ch function. IO stream is the input output stream library and it gives us C out which is the console output. Then we have this using namespace STD. This STD stands for standard. There are a couple things in here that belong to the standard namespace. Actually C out and NL both belong to the standard namespace. And if I take this code out and I try to compile it, now I mean we can see the red underlines here. There were build errors. Would you like to continue? No. NL is undefined. C out is undefined. It's because C out is not really the true name of C out. The true name of C out is STD colon colon, and the true name of NL is STD NL. And now when I run this, everything works fine. So this using namespace thing here actually says, hey, we are going to be treating ourselves as though we're in the standard namespace, which means that everything else in the standard namespace we can access without specifically saying, hey, this is part of the standard namespace. These less than less than signs are the output operators. These are actually functions that use the C out object and this what we call a string literal as parameters of a function. I could replace this thing right here with a function call that looks like this operator less than less than c out comma hello world and compile it and that works as well this is kind of something more advanced and this will make a little bit more sense after you learn what a function is and what an overloaded operator is but for now it makes a lot more sense just to use C out like this with the less than less than signs separating the different things that you want to print. You can actually print many different things. So I can print more stuff and even numbers. And as long as I separate everything with these output operators, everything will compile just fine. If I don't have those output operators in there, like so, then things break. I want to mention a couple things. Uh, first of all, I'm using these curly brackets here, and these curly brackets are enclosures. When you have an opening curly bracket, you have to close the curly bracket, and everything inside of it kind of belongs inside of this package, inside of this pocket. The semicolons are also another very important piece of syntax, and if you miss a semicolon, then things won't compile, and you'll get these errors down here. Right here it says, there were build errors, would you like to continue? Whenever you see this dialog, hit no, because if you hit yes, it'll start running the last build that did work, which will not be true to the code that you've written. So here we see that there's an error because the semicolon is missing. Now I can put that semicolon anywhere as long as it happens before this getch function. Like I can put it here. In fact, I can put a whole bunch of them here. And run the code and everything will be fine. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave it as the regular old one semicolon at the end. So this getch thing, this stands for get character because it waits for a single character for the user to press the, the keyboard once. There are a number of ways that you can get the computer to wait for you at the end of a program. GetCH I think is the best one. Another way that you could do it is by using something called system. And system is a function that is actually part of the stdlib.h, the standard library, but this is automatically included by iostream, so that's why we don't need to pound include standard library. And when I run this, it's going to say press any key to continue. This is actually a console command, and system is an incredibly powerful and dangerous tool 
because you can call any arbitrary console command. For example, I can ask the system to print out the directory structure. And there we go. You can do many other different kinds of commands inside of system. If you want to figure out what kinds of things you'd like to do with system, you can go ahead and do that yourselves. It is very powerful and dangerous, and that's why you shouldn't use it. The getch approach is the safer alternative. You can also print stuff out using another method. Rather than see out, you can use something called printf. And with printf, I can do that. Now printf is a function that is inside of a library called the standard input output library. This code will also compile and it'll run exactly the same way. Now it's a little bit trickier if you want to include multiple things inside of a printf statement because with cout all you have to do is separate things out with the output operator. But in printf you have to make a formatted string. That's what this F stands for. It stands for print formatted. So if I wanted to print multiple strings and variables concatenated together, I would need to do something like this. Percent %s percent %s percent %d and more string data 1, 2, 3. So this means this is the formatting of the string I'm going to print out. It's going to print out a string with a space after it, and then another string with a space after it, and then a set of numbers. And I can do things in here like put different character combinations in here to change the format. And when I run it, this is exactly how it printed out. Some programmers prefer printf to see out because printf is faster and the formatting is a little bit more powerful and flexible when you want to do really complicated things like print variables in hexadecimal to a specific digit count. And I'm going to put this back to the C out thing, back to the way it was. So I also want to show you guys how to do this exact kind of program using Eclipse, which is another integrated developer environment. Here I'm using Eclipse Indigo and I have the Eclipse CDT, the, the C development tools installed on it so that I can write C code. I'm just going to redo the same thing that I did here except in Eclipse. And it's going to look very similar. Here there's a welcome screen which we can just skip because I know how all of it works. And I'm going to make a new C++ project and it's going to be using the MinGW toolchain. This is something that I had to install separately. And I can actually use this toolchain using the command line. And I'll show you how to do that after this. So I'm going to make my project Hello World Project. And finish that. And just like in the Visual Studio 2010 project, I have to make a new file, a source file. I'm going to call it main.cpp just like the other one. And because this is C++, I can use the exact same code from the other project. So I can just copy that and paste it here. Well, almost the exact same code. When I run this, and I run it by going to project, build project, gives me errors. Get ch could not be resolved. Oh, it gives me errors because I didn't save. So I need to save. I can just hit control s for that and then try to build it again, build project. There we go. And now if I want to run it, I go to run, run. And then it's running down here, hello world. Now unfortunately it's broken in Eclipse. It's waiting for a key press but it doesn't matter how many keys I press it's not gonna work because this console is different than the other console that came out here. When I run this this is using the Win32 console which Con.io is designed to work with very well but over here Con.io 
doesn't work very well with it. So when we do programs with Eclipse, we can't use get ch and con io. Luckily, we don't need to because the console doesn't disappear as soon as the program is finished so that we can see the output. Now let me show you how to do it in the standard console. You can get to it by typing cmd in the run bar and that will bring up the console here. I already have one open at C drive and I can get to the directory of my program by typing cd projects slash he hello 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 world project and in here I have main.cpp and then a debug folder this is the folder that Eclipse generated that has my executable in there and I can run that executable by just doing this cd debug slash hello world project.exe and there it runs but if I wanted to compile all of this myself I'm gonna back out of debug by doing C dot dot I'll call G++ the GNU compiler is the open source compiler and it's it's one of the most powerful C++ compilers there is right now it's also totally free and it also comes with every installation of Linux but if I want to compile I do G++ main.cpp so I'm telling it what to compile then I'm going to have it output to program and it will create a new file called program and if I check my directory there is now a program.exe and when I execute it it runs the hello world program well I hope this was educational for you guys let me know if you have any questions or comments